Hello my beautiful viewers on my channel James Higgins Open World. Well here we are, episode 13 of James Higgins World of Strange Powers Yorkshire Ghost Stories. So let's get to it. One second. Right, just wait till you hear this. Wait Yorkshire hear. is famous for its links with the supernatural world. So if spooky tales are your thing, this will be right up your street. The region is a hotbed of paranormal activity with ghost stories left, right and center. From the headless phantom that terrorizes Scarborough Castle to the ghostly monk that haunts the ruins Bolton Abbey, you can uncover plenty of spooky tales and hair-raising histories. So join us. Hey! One second. Right, one second, we'll get to the first story. The first story is the Grey Lady. Right, wait till you hear this. One of the most haunted buildings in Yorkshire. East Riddlesdon Hall is a 17th century manor house filled with supernatural activity. It's said that many ghost roams the building, with sightings of everything from ghoulish children to spirit animals over the years, but the most frequent visitor is the Grey Lady. During the Civil War, her husband, the Lord of the Manor, returned home to find that she'd been having an affair. Seething with anger, he murdered her lover and sealed the Grey Lady behind a brick wall. Today, her spirit is said to roam the corridors in search of her lost lover. There have been ghostly sightings of her in what is now called the Grey Lady's Chamber. Staff have often felt an unnerving presence here, and children have questioned who the lady in the corner of the room is when no one else is there. Wow, eh? The Grey Lady. Wow. Let's get to the next story. Just one second. The Headless Ghost of Piers Gaveston. One second, we'll get to this story. One second. The tale of Piers Gaveston, Earl of Cornwall, is one of the region's more bloody ghost stories. His headless spirit is said to haunt the 3,000-year-old Scarborough Castle. There are rumours that he'd leap out of the shadows at tourists, causing them to fall off a sheer drop down the cliff. Despite the fact that his spirit seems to linger around the Yorkshire coastline, his execution actually took place down south. When the country was threatened by civil war, Piers and his close friend King Edward II fled to Scarborough. He was captured at the castle by the Earls of Pembroke and Warwick when the king escaped to York. After begging for a fair trial in London, Piers was dragged past a jeering crowd and beheaded in Warwick. It's said that his bitterness has led him to terrorise the living ever since. Wow, hey, wow, bloody hell, hey, one second. This story is the last drummer boy. Wait till you hear this. The small village of Richmond has a mysterious tale to its name. In the late 18th century, soldiers at Richmond Castle discovered an underground tunnel they believed would lead to Easby Abbey. They could only go so far down the narrow, rubble-filled passageway, so they hatched a plan. A small drummer boy would continue through the tunnel while banging his drum so the soldiers could follow the route from above. First, the plan seemed to work. They got all the way to Easby Woods, just half a mile away from the abbey, before the drumming stopped. The sudden silence unsettled the soldiers so much that they abandoned the task and decided to never explore the tunnel again. Some believe the roof collapsed on the boy and broke his neck, while others suspected a beast devoured him. To this day, no one knows what happened to the lost drummer boy, but his drumming is often carried on the wind, and it's said that his headless ghost roams the area. Bloody hell, eh? Wow! It's one second. This next tale is the Blue Lady. Wow! Let's have a listen to this. There have been countless sightings of a sobbing spirit in the house and grounds at Temple Newsom. The ghost is said to be 14-year-old Mary Ingham, the granddaughter of Sir Arthur Ingham, who rebuilt Temple Newsom House in the 17th century. Also known as the Blue Lady, her most prized possession was a gifted string of pearls. One dark night, she was returning home from a party when a highwayman ambushed her carriage and stole the necklace. Traumatized, she fell into a deep sleep and woke up with no memory of the event, but in the weeks that followed, her behavior changed. She constantly searched the house and hid her possessions in unusual places until she eventually starved herself to death. Since then, there have been sightings of the Blue Lady in and around the house, still in search of her lost pearls. Wow! The Blue Lady! Wow! 
Bloody hell, eh? Some ghosts in Yorkshire, isn't there, eh? Wow! This story is the headless drunk. Wow! One of the more gruesome ghost stories in Yorkshire is the tale of Bert Marshall. His ghost is said to haunt the railway track at the top of Robin Hood's Bay on moonless nights. Unusually, his spirit clasps a pair of dentures, the same ones he stole from a corpse to replace his own teeth. His death, however, is even more gory. A cash-poor farmer who was unable to afford a horse, he walked along the railway line every Friday night to his favorite pub, the Wind Hill Inn. One drunken night, while walking home, he fell asleep on the railway tracks. A train sped past and decapitated him. When the police arrived, they could find no sign of his head, only his lifeless body. Bert's headless ghost has been known to drift around the track ever since, making a clacking sound with the dentures to try find his missing head. Wow! Bloody hell, eh? Wow! Can you believe it? Wow! Bloody hell! One second. One second. The half-ghost of Spofforth Castle. One second. Just one second. Hardly anyone visits the ruins of Spofforth Castle, with the <clears> possible <throat> exception of a resident ghost. The first record of a ghostly sighting was in the 1960s, when a group of picnickers saw a bluish-white hue hurdle from the top of the tower. A few years later, a school group witnessed the same thing. The apparition appeared at the top of the tower out of nowhere, <clears throat> and to their horror, the bottom half of her body was missing. Thinking it was a real lady, they screamed as she fell to the ground, but before she got there, she disappeared into thin air. Unsure whether to be relieved or thoroughly spooked, they made a swift exit. Wow! Unbelievable, eh? What the hell? It's just the next story, the screaming skull. What the hell? One second. One second. When Sir Henry Giffith built Burton Agnes Hall, he had no idea that it would become his daughter's final resting place, but and was so taken with the building that she couldn't bear to be parted from it. Just ten years after it was complete, she took a fateful journey to St. Quentin's at Harpham, but she was robbed and attacked on the road. She made it home, but died just days later. Before her death, she told her sisters that she would never rest unless part of her remained in her beautiful home, but when she died, she was buried in the churchyard, so her ghost returned to haunt them. Traumatized, they consulted a vicar and opened her grave to bring her skull inside the house. So long as it remains undisturbed, the hall remains peaceful and it keeps her distance. Wow! Bloody hell! Wow! One second! Well, I hope you're, in, you're enjoying this episode of James Higgins World of Strange Powers, episode 13. Yorkshire Ghost Stories, so let's continue. The Roman Wrath, one second. One second, just one second, wait till you hear this. A sorrowful tale from start to finish, the story of Marmaduke Buckle is one of York's most noteworthy ghost stories. He was physically handicapped, but because he was living in the unforgiving 17th century, this meant that he was accused of witchcraft. As a result, he spent most of his life hidden away in his house on Goodramgate in central York. Eventually, he decided he couldn't take it anymore. After carving his initials, birth date, and the date into a wooden beam, he ended his life by hanging himself at just 18 years old. It's said that his ghost still haunts the building, and you can find him to this day, slamming doors and flicking light switches. There are even rumors that he tried to push someone down the stairs in the pub next door. Wow! Unbelievable, eh? Bloody hell, these ghosts in Yorkshire, I'm telling you! Wow! Just one second. Constance de Beverly. Constance de Beverly, this story. Let's get to listening to this. Wow! Just one second. Wait to hear this. The imposing ruins of Whitby Abbey have stirred up ghostly rumours since Anglo-Saxon times, long before Bram Stoker's Dracula. The Phantom of St. Hilda has been spotted in one of the highest windows, and the thunderous sound of horses' hooves have been heard in the dead of night, but the most chilling ghost story is that of a ghoulish nun, who has been seen running through the abbey. Constance de Beverly was a young nun who met her death after breaking her sacred vows. Despite her promise to dedicate her life to God, 
Constance fell in love with heroic knight Marmion. Eventually, the other nuns found out and told everyone her secret. As punishment, she was bricked up alive in the walls of the building. Since then, her ghost has been seen among the Whitby Abbey ruins, begging to be freed. Bloody hell, eh? Bloody, that's a bit cruel, isn't it? Very cruel. Bloody sadistic, that. Unbelievable. Wow. The next story is The Ghostly Monk. Oh, bloody hell. Keep watching James Higgins' World of Strange Powers, episode 13. Yorkshire Ghost Stories. Get in there. One second. And this is the last story on this episode of James Higgins' World of Strange Powers, episode 13. Two to go. And that's it for six months. So let's hear it. The 12th century Augustinian monastery ruins of Bolton Abbey are said to be home to a roaming monk. Witnessed by the Marquis of Harrington in 1912, there have been rumours of him lurking around the area ever since. Known as the Black Cannon, he's been seen by many a visitor over the years. The monk was said to have died shortly after the dissolution of the monasteries by Henry VIII, and his spirit has continued to linger. Robed in a black cloak and a flat brick hat, he's been described as an older man in his late sixties with a heavily wrinkled face. Over the years, a surprising number of people have reported the sound of his sandals moving around the area, and they've even noted the smell of his incense in the summer. Well, that's it. That's this episode of James Higgins World of Strange Powers, episode 13. Yorkshire Ghost Stories comes to an end. So, uh, check next week's episode, uh, episode 14. Wow, some, keep watching. Two more left. 14, 15, and that's it for six months. And then the new series starts. So, get in there.